So today I wanted to finally settle the score on what is actually going to be the most important attachments on the MP5. Some of these are going to include actual real statistics that do back up these findings. So let's just settle the debate right here and right now. I've seen what is better, monolithic integral suppressor versus subsonic integral suppressor. Now the short answer is that the monolithic is a better option because it has that bullet velocity. Now you guys have actually heard me say this many times that I prefer this attachment because it seems that the shots seem to connect more consistently and it also gives you that sound suppression to remain as stealthy as possible the other thing that people like to argue about the subsonic integral suppressor is the fact that it gives you sound suppression no visible tracers aimed on sight speed as well as no enemy skulls yes those are all nice things but you know what's the point of running that if it has a kind of bullet velocity now this bullet velocity actually reduces your damage range quite significantly by about 30 percent now shout out to exclusive ace he actually posted a video talking about these specific attachments that the bullet velocity has a direct correlation to your damage range so that's why the subsonic integral suppressor is just not worth it for me it's a 30 percent decrease in your damage you know why would you want to use that that's why the monolithic is the superior attachment here for the next attachment we're going to be running with stock nothing's really changed here I like the fact that it increases our movement speed as well as our aim down sight speed and we are running with that stippled grip tape of course we've got to have this for more aim down sight speed as well as that sprint to fire speed to help us pull up our weapons a lot faster when we're coming off of a sprint now for the ammunition this is another debate that people tend to have with each other versus the auto 30 round magazines now the short answer is the 45 round magazines should be your choice by default because yes the 10 millimeter auto 30 round magazine does give you that damage and range increase however it's really not by a large margin it's almost virtually the same as far as time to kill goes and the range is a lot better on the 10 millimeter auto 30 round magazines but think about this from a logical perspective now the recoil control reduction is actually fairly noticeable so if you're trying to engage in long range combat number one you're already going to be running out of ammo before you know it because you only have 30 rounds and also that recoil control reduction you're going to have a hard time hitting your target from long range so at that that point you might as well just use the 45 round magazine because like i said from up close it virtually has the same time to kill for our last attachment we're going to be running with the merc foregrip this one's going to give us that recoil control from distance as well as better hip fire accuracy for those close quarter combat situations all right so another component to this class setup that i am now doing which is new is using the m19 as my secondary so you guys may already know about this little secret but if you put the fully loaded perk on this gun and it will actually translate into more ammunition for your mp5 because we're using the same exact type of ammo so essentially you get a sixth attachment for free which is going to be fully loaded and it's going to give you a lot more ammo to work with and you don't need to worry about finding more ammo throughout the match all right so now we're going to be transitioning to the second half of the video where i break down my gameplay using this exact same class setup and also providing some tips and tricks and tactics that will help you improve as a player make sure to drop a like if you want to see more breakdown videos like this as well as more class setups and make sure you subscribe if you new around here i'm almost at 100,000 subscribers i really appreciate it if you could join turbo nation today make it official i'll see you guys in the video peace all right so here we are we're playing on superstore i don't think i've ever covered a superstore breakdown yet so usually when i spawn in from this end of the map i like to head over to this area and i'll come up here for a good vantage point because number one you get to see if there are enemies that are propped up right here and also enemies that are over here now obviously my teammate just died over here so that's why i'm actually going to remove myself from that situation as fast as possible every time you have a cue such as what i just did there always try to react as fast as possible and always stay on the move you don't want to you know wait too long to make a decision so here i am now i'm on the opposite side of the map and i'm looking to go for the flank and the flank is going to allow me to get easier kills because my teammates are keeping the opponents busy while i sneak up from behind them so as you can see on the mini map right here all of my teammates are still on the opposite side of the superstore so this allows me to go ahead and rotate around here and possibly get some kills so obviously that is what my objective is going to be so i'm going to pre-aim over here and that's what you always want to do when you're turning around corners is because you know you never know with these blind spots that there might be enemies there and you just want to be sure that you get the upper hand in that gunfight so here i am i'm actually in the enemy spawn and I was able to get a pretty successful flank right there. That guy had absolutely no idea. Now, this guy's actually shooting at me right now, and I stim shotted just to be able to give myself a lot more confidence to go back into that gunfight. And that's why I rushed back into it. Now, I'm gonna hop over the side of this corner. 
and that's gonna allow me to win this gunfight now normally i would not suggest to challenge that because you know the guy had really good positioning he was head glitched behind that box you know i wouldn't really advise doing that unless you're confident now as you can see here i'm still working their spawns and that's also something that you have to recognize is how to work the spawns without flipping them so as you can see i'm going from location to location i'm not really rushing around like a chicken with my head cut off right now i've got everything under control and i'm basically anchoring their spawn right now now anchoring is a term that's used when you're holding an area down and as you can see this guy totally disrespected me here and i was checking the scoreboard to see you know how many kills does this guy have and you know why is he so upset and why did he just you know he teabagged me so at this point i'm completely furious and i'm like you know what i'm gonna try my absolute best to do my best in the game so here i am again i'm on this side of the map again you know every time i move around the map there's a specific reason for it you know there's a strategy behind it so as you can see i got a pretty good vantage point by hopping over those boxes to see if there are enemies in this area now i do hear somebody's footsteps here and i just want to make sure that i'm not hearing anything so i approach the situation very cautiously now i slide around this corner and there he is right there now i'm also using the tracker perk so that also helped me associate with the fact that there was an enemy around here so i'm in their spawn again but this time on the opposite side i am hearing some footsteps now notice how i'm not completely pushing the spawn i'm actually letting the situation unfold first before anything happens and i make my moves so i did also hear some footsteps around here look at the floor and I come around here and I do get a kill, but I was shot from behind. So I just spawn in here to a nice little kill. And I'm looking at the mini map. There is somebody right here in the corner and I'm completely focused on this guy. And this is a mistake that I make sometimes as well as where I get that tunnel vision. And you're going to see right here as the gameplay plays that I do get caught by this person right here. And this person was obviously using ghost. And in that situation, I probably should have scanned the whole area first before I decided to go with that tunnel vision that I had. So as you can see here, I've died a couple times already. Yes, I know it's a little boring, but you know, that's why I post these videos to show you guys that even if I do die a lot of times in the beginning, if you just learn how to study the opponent, learn how they play and adjust your gameplay accordingly to what the team is giving you, then you can still do well and you know if you stick to your plan remain confident so here i am again i'm once again in their spawn i'm not really doing anything different now here i got flashed there's really nothing i can do but i went prone usually you know you have like about like maybe an 80 percent chance of dying right there now i don't know if you guys noticed this but the highlight of this video that i also do want to point out is the fact that i'm using high alert so if you look right here i'm using high alert for my specialist streak and at two kills that's what you get so as you can see here it's showing exactly where the enemy is looking at me from and this is something that i'm actually surprised that i have not covered yet because this is perfect for stealth type of players such as myself who flank around the map for trying to stay alive as long as possible now as you can see that high high alert perk is the reason why i survived and i turned around and associated the highlights in the direction where that was coming from and that's how i was able to get the kill so here i am again i'm on this end of the superstore map once again i'm here by myself trying to anchor this part of their spawn without really pushing it so here's the reasoning behind it you know you want to let the enemies come to you as they come into the spawn it's just easy kills from there so i close that door just to make sure that i don't get flanked and even if i do i'm able to hear the door open now i did notice that my high alert indicators did go on once again and i turn around but unfortunately the guy threw a c4 and he was able to kill me so now i'm back on this end of the map i do notice that red dot i'm gonna throw the c4 over the corner unfortunately i didn't get the kill and i tried to slide around the corner in hopes that i was able to finish the guy off but you know it just didn't work out for me in there so i've died plenty of times already so uh my objective right now is just again to try to get into their spawn you know i'm not gonna let these guys post up because superstore is such a campy map once they post up in these little crates and areas in the darkness, you know, it's pretty much game over. So you really have to try to keep them at bay in their spawn. And you'll see what I mean by, you know, holding down, being an anchor and trying to be basically a gatekeeper of them going into the superstore. So I'm just making my rounds here. I'm kind of like circulating around where their spawn is. And again, I'm just trying to maintain the enemies at bay. So I'm going to turn around here. Now, the reason why I go this way is because I've got teammates behind me and teammates on the opposite side of the store as well. So me filling in these lanes correctly is going to result in me getting much easier kills because this is how you pick up stragglers. Stragglers is a term that I use when you pick up 
enemies that are just you know running around the map by themselves so here's some footsteps i pretty much just follow it easy kills no real need for in-depth explanation there so now i'm gonna rotate to this part of the map once again and i noticed these footsteps over here i'm gonna try to beat this guy but unfortunately my teammate was fast enough to be able to get the kill and same thing results over here so i turn around immediately and also notice how i'm always on the move i'm not really staying in one spot i'm always on the move because like look at this man if you stay in one spot the enemy team is literally just gonna find you eventually and you're just gonna die off your streak you know you always want to be on the move every time you get a kill so i picked up a nice little triple kill there and now i'm gonna make my way into here now the reason why i go here specifically if you look at the mini map is because i have a teammate holding this area down right here because at this point we would just be competing for kills if there were enemies to come down here and at the same time if there's enemies coming down through this way then i could possibly get flanked and shot from the side if i were to watch this lane as well so that's exactly why it's important to fill in those lanes correctly and always make those adjustments well so here you go i'm able to get the kill right here as well i'm going to turn on my dead silence to be as stealthy as possible so they don't hear my footsteps i'm going to slide around this corner i'm going to pre-aim here teammate actually just died behind me so i'm going to go ahead and investigate that see if i can pick up these kills there's this guy right here in the corner man let's oh god we got to look at that one more time like in real time when i was playing this match there was no way in heck i would be able to see this guy right here i mean look how much he blends in with the map so that's why at the last second i went ahead with the hip fire because he all of a sudden moved out from the corner i was like whoa i was pretty surprised all right so i don't know if you guys noticed but the enemy team actually did leave their game so that's why i'm out here actually pushing their spawn looking for those you know last few remaining players and obviously these footsteps did lead me to whoever was left in the game you know i i totally don't like that when enemies leave the game you know because then it just kind of disrupts the flow so here we go again I, I am just pretty much following those footsteps i check my left before i go ahead and proceed just to make sure i don't get shot from the side and i'm actually on a ruthless right now and those indicators did flash right there so i'm going to turn my attention in this direction right here try to get him with the c4 unfortunately he's got eod and now this is the part where i decide that it's no longer uh you know safe for me to try to confront him from that angle so i'm going to try to go and flank him from this side and that's part of being a smart player is just outplaying the opponent and here we go and i'm able to get the flank he thought i was still in that area so here i got caught reloading and i wasn't able to get the guy before he turned the corner then he came back and i was able to finish him off and going back to just playing smart you know this is something that you have to learn how to adapt mid game and make those changes right away because call of duty is such a fast-paced game it, you know it's just it takes that split second before they turn around figure out what you're doing and kill you off of your streak so that's why you got to move quickly and notice the cues in the game when they happen so the game is about to end right here and again i'm just kind of patrolling the situation and i'm not pushing too far into their spawn so at this point i'm kind of just waiting for the match to end you know there's only one kill left in the game i do see this guy and i was able to kill him by drop shotting now that's another reason why you need to learn how to drop shot because of those situations there it could definitely save your life and also from those unneeded deaths so as you can see guys i died multiple times in the beginning i was on a death streak and you know that's why you gotta learn how to keep your composure try to remain as confident as possible and as you can see here i ended up the match with 37 kills and six deaths regardless even if i was struggling in the beginning of the match and the reason why i ended up doing well anyway towards the end is because i stuck to my plan i stuck to the outskirts of the map i flanked as much as i possibly could i filled in those lanes correctly i did not bunch up with my teammates i wasn't pushing the spawns too hard i was rotating around the map constantly i wasn't just staying in one spot and i was trying to outsmart and be a couple steps ahead of the enemy as much as i possibly can so yeah guys if you guys did learn something today i'd really appreciate it if you drop a like on this video and also it will show me that this is the kind of content you want to continue to see and make sure you subscribe around here join turbo nation today make it official join us before we hit 100,000 subscribers it would be really cool if you guys would join me here for this journey and i really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing on the channel lately hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you guys in the next video peace